her here. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to an all-new edition of Christian Music Spotlight. We'd like to thank those that are watching not only on television, but also online at our YouTube page at youtube.com slash Christ Music Spotlight, as we are live via Google Hangouts. Thanks for joining us. This is a place where we give you the stories and testimonies behind the songs of your favorite artists right here in Christian Music, and I have a very special guest joining us. He uh, joined us a couple of years ago. He's got a brand new project, Yellow Balloons, coming out next month, and he's got a huge radio single out on the year right now i want to go back uh he was on season two of nbc's the voice please welcome david dunn to the show david how are you doing well man thanks for having me thanks for joining us uh talk about your latest single that hit the airwaves right now i want to go back it's a very uh encouraging song and it really gets believers back to basics of their faith and really what matters and what's important what was the inspiration behind that song um uh, I'll give you the long explanation because I, I haven't figured out how to make it sync yet. Um, so when I write songs in, in general um, and records as a whole, I am, uh, I'm actually giving you a snapshot of some period of my life, right? So it's, you know, if you listen to my last record, Crystal Clear, it's a snapshot of 2011 and 2012. And then I, I make a project that's kind of those things that I've been learning and the things I've been going through in that period of time. And with this record, um, um, the majority of uh, the album is um, um, about something that happened to me and my family um, about two years ago now. Um, I was in uh, Midland, which is where I'm from. I've got five brothers and sisters and a million nieces and nephews. And I was there playing a show. And before the show, before sound check, I was running around um, uh, kind of hanging out with all the nieces and nephews. And um, I went over to my sister's house and she had two little girls and I was playing with them. And then I left to go sound check and they were going to go down for a nap. And um, there were two and four. And um, my two year old niece went down for her nap and uh, just didn't wake up from her nap. I know why still. Um, so um, the record ended up being um, really almost every song in the entire thing about that. Um, kind of tragedy that happened to um, the Dunn family. Um, so uh, the songs on the record kind of they sort of break down into two categories. Um, the songs about little kids, and um, their songs about heaven. So um, I want to go back is uh, me thinking about kids, and. Um, you know, the way that that sort of played out was me me going, hey, you know, what, is, what does God say about kids? And in general, if you're like me, um, I tended to always talk about kids in sort of degrading terms, right? Like, stop acting like a kid, acting like a kid. Um, and Jesus almost exclusively talks about kids in a, um overwhelmingly positive way, right? As a matter of fact, he mostly encourages us to be more like children, not less like children. And um, so I started thinking about what's, what's that look like for me? What's the difference between me as a, as a tiny kid and me the adult me? And I think the major difference is um, that when I was a kid, um, faith and Jesus boiled down to, to two things, right? It boiled down to um, was right? That he existed and that he loved me. And that was really the only two things that mattered. Um, and then I grew up and faith in Jesus became uh, this theological mountain that I felt like I had to climb, right? I had to know all of these ornate, complicated things um, to, to have a real faith. And I uh, want to go back is is a reminder for me um, as a grown-up to um, value the important things that I valued as a kid, that Jesus was, right, that he existed, and that he loves me. You know, I value that song quite a bit because it's just like you said, it, it focuses us really back on what's important, just a basic concept that we tend to lose that, 
we are all loved. We all matter. And to focus on the things and the people that are important in our lives and our many prayers and uh, many thoughts go with your family when it comes to the tragedy that you endured. Um, but I think it's Thank wonderful you. that out of this season, out of this tragedy, it's amazing time and time again, I hear stories doing this show about how God turns that tragedy and he turns it into something beautiful with it. And so I love how you're able to take this and just really help somebody else who's going through the same bit of heartache or the same bit of struggle. And for those, obviously Yellow Balloons, and this entire album that's coming out next month is a reflection of that. For those who may be struggling with a similar loss or a similar time of just feeling, uh, needing to know that they're loved by, by our creator, what sort of advice going through this entire process, not only with this tragedy, but in recording this album, uh, what sort of advice would you share with those folks that could help them out? Well... Um, here's the thing. Um, when someone, when someone dies, um, and they're, you know, a 90 year old, you know, a 90 year old dies, um, you can celebrate the 90 years that they lived, right? You can, you can say, here's, here's what we're grateful for in this person's life. And when a 50 year old dies, it's a little sadder because there's less to celebrate and when a 20-year-old dies, same thing, right? It's sad, but there's 20 years to celebrate. When a two-year-old dies, to, um, to put a happy spin on, on the life that they've lived. Why? Because they've really only been cognizant that they're alive and that everybody else around them is alive and that their people are their people for a year, 18 months. So... Um, the record is called Yellow Balloons because yellow balloons are actually the thing that you let go at a um, like a child's memorial service, which is what we did for Mariah was her name. And um, uh, I give to people. Um, here's what I would say. I tried very hard that the title track to to write um, a song is called Yellow Balloons to write a song. Um, about the things that I know about God, right? I know that he's moving in this um, tragedy, right? I know that he is a part of it. I know that he is in control of everything that's happening. Um, and I wanted to write that song to go, um, this happened and it's bad, but also I know that Jesus is working and that he's making things for our good and for his good, right? I know that that's the case. And I know that. Um, but it took me eight months to realize while writing this song um, that just because I know that to be true, it still is a very difficult thing for me to, to put a nice spin on. And so Yellow Balloons um, ends up being a song that's really about me going, um, this is hard, right? And it hurts. Um, and um, I don't understand it, God. I'm kind of mad at you for, for allowing it to happen. Um, but the thing that I do know is that um, I'm, I'm and we're, the Donna family, is never going to make it through this unless, unless you walk us through it. Right? This hurts. It's hard. And, and we're never going to make it through without you here with us. So I don't know what to tell people. I don't have anything to tell people. I don't know what the answer is. I know that God is in control and that he's doing what he wants to do for the best of everyone. But it still just feels like an unfair thing um, for him to decide that needs to happen. It feels like a, you know, you know, a difficult thing to swallow, to accept. You know, I'm sure that you, know, you look at stories like Job's story. I'm sure he was in the same boat is that Job went, um, you know, God, I don't know what you're doing. It doesn't make any sense. He actually says this out loud, right? So that's sort of how I feel about it is, is that this is like a, you know, something I don't understand, and maybe I will eventually, but I don't understand it. I know with my brain God moving, but it doesn't make it any easier to swallow. 
David Dunn is with us. Definitely our thoughts and uh, prayers with your entire family as you continue to navigate through that. And I guess the scripture says, though there may be pain in the night, there's uh, joy in the morning. And uh, definitely, I, I think that it's great when you said, we don't have all the answers. And I think that's true for any of us. With a lot of things that we go through in life, we don't have all the answers. But I think um, all we can do is point to the one mm -hmm. who does have the answers. And that we can look to mm -hmm. for the answers and so definitely thank you for your honesty and for your transparency when it comes to not only sharing your story as best as you can in a very difficult subject but uh, um, putting it into song to hopefully help somebody else who may be going through a similar situation David Dunn is with yeah. us here on Christian Music Spotlight. As always, we give you the stories and testimonies behind the songs of your favorite artists here in Christian Music. And, of course, uh, most people who may or may not have caught our last interview also may or may not know that you were on NBC's The Voice Season 2. What was some of your favorite experiences on The Voice, either getting to work with uh, some of the stars on that show or just getting to appear, uh, getting your break on that show. What are some of your favorite experiences and stories from that time you could share? Oh, man. Um, I think the best thing about that show um, was probably the, um, um, the moments that we weren't filming, to be honest with you. Um, they do, a, in my opinion, a great job of, of finding people who are – Talent contestants, right? Finding people who are talented and very interesting to be around. And then they shove us in a hotel for months on end and tell us we can't leave. So what it ended up being was <laughs> just like a, it ended up being just like a kid's camp, right? To where there's <laughs> where all it's only the counselors and we just hung out with each other for, you know, all the hours of the day except for one where we might be filming one thing. And the rest of the time we're just hanging out and playing music and talking and laughing and um so that was my favorite part of the show is I, I still have a bunch of relationships this was years ago now, right? 2012 or 2011, something like that is when I was wow, always. Wow, it's been that long already? Wow. Oh, it's been a while, man. I think they're on season 12 or 13 or something like that at this point. So it was, it was only the second season of The Voice that I was on. And, uh, you know, just good people that I'm still friends with today, which is, you know, that's without question my favorite part of being on that show. Are the people just as genuine as you might think on the show? Is there anything, any stories about some of the fun people that you could possibly share that uh, viewers, as they're watching at home, may not know while watching The Voice? Oh, God. You have to have <laughs> quite the memory to even probably remember a season. If you've been an avid Voice fan, um, quite the memory to go back 10 seasons or whatever it's been. Um, say, I would say people are pretty genuine. Um, um, I don't want to throw anybody under any buses, so I'm, I'm not going to tell any stories. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Well played, David. David Dunn is with us here at Christian Music Spotlight. Uh, we are here live, of course, so I'd like to welcome our viewers joining us on YouTube. Uh, Christian Music Spotlight, our YouTube home, and as well on television as well. Will this will appear on our regular linear television broadcast? Or is this new album, Yellow Balloons, coming out uh, February? Tell us when it's coming out and um, where viewers can listen to it and pick it up and all that kind of fun stuff. Sure. Um, it's coming out February 17th. I think it's going up for pre-order in the next couple of days. Um, I should know that date, but I don't. Um, yeah, 17th, it'll come out. Um, you can get it off of iTunes. I think I'll carry it in a couple of Christian bookstores as well. So if you want to go get a hard copy, you can as well. Um, Really excited about it. Actually, with most of the records that I've put out, um, I go through some sort of remorseful period, right? I make the record and then finish it, and, and we can't change it anymore. And I go through some period of time to where I go, oh, man, I wish that I'd changed this thing, right? This thing was wrong, and we made the wrong song choice here. And um, I don't feel that way about this record. So uh, that's the thing that I'm most excited about is that me as an artist, we finished, and I went, you know, all the choices that we made so february 17th and um if you'd like to you can go check out social media pages instagram and facebook and and uh we'll be posting some um up-to-date information about the release and there's a couple of videos if you want to go watch those and get a sneak peek into some of the songs and Oh, are you still there, David? Yeah, can you hear me? 
I can hear you. Okay. Okay, great. Christian Music Spotlight, David Dunn is with us here on the program. Well, we got a little bit of time on our show. It's time for a little bit of fun, fast, facts, saving a chance where we get to find out a little bit more about your favorite artists. Uh, some rapid-fire questions for you. Are you ready? David, here we go. Favorite television show you like to watch either at home or away? Well, besides The Voice, maybe. Um, <laughs> I don't watch The Voice anymore. I didn't win that season, so no. Ah, I'm got gotcha. it. Um, favorite TV show right now is Friends. I'll be darned. How about that? I it's think on that's Netflix, a, which is why I am um, rehashing the old. So you can love. you can binge watch binge watch all ten seasons or whatever it was of that show right now. I'm on season seven currently. There you go. Three more to go. Uh -huh. Favorite food you like to enjoy either at home or away. You got a favorite uh, favorite snack you like to enjoy? I eat a lot of Brussels sprouts, and I know that's kind of a you know. A girly answer, but I eat a lot of Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I eat Brussels sprouts, liver, and chicken, and that's about the extent of my diet. Wow. All right. Favorite, I know that's weird. <laughs> favorite place that you've had an opportunity in your musical travels, of course, so far. Is there a favorite spot you've had a chance to perform? I got to go do some shows in Denmark, and that was amazing. Wow. Yeah, I really, really thoroughly enjoy going to Denmark. I'll say that's my, that's my favorite place to go play thus far. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Israel last March, which was unbelievable, which is like the coolest place I've ever been in my entire life. So Israel. I don't even know why that didn't pop into my head first. Israel. <laughs> you know, I was going to ask you about Denmark until I heard Israel. Um, visiting the Holy Land, I've, I've never gotten to experience that. For those that haven't, is it, is, is it as much of a just memorable, awe-inspiring experience as as most people would imagine? Yeah. It's like the Bible in 3D, right? It's like every Bible story you ever heard as a little kid all come to life. It's the most unbelievably magical place I've ever been in my life. Everyone should go to Israel. If you've opened up the Holy Bible, you should go to Israel. As we are taping this right now, we are in the middle of NFL playoff season. If you are a sports watcher, do you have a favorite football or sports team that you like to sit down and watch? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I am a season ticket holder for an NFL sports team. Oh, boy. I am a huge Oilers fan. Do you know about the Oilers, the Houston Oilers? Houston, uh, well, actually... There's the Houston Texans, yeah, and then the them. Houston Oilers actually moved over to the Tennessee Titans. They did. So that's where I watch the Houston Oilers every weekend they're here. And actually, you live in Nashville, correct? So you get a chance to watch them just about every week. And I live, I live right down the street from the stadium. So um, anytime I'm not traveling and, and there's a game on Sunday, you will find me wearing my Houston Oiler garb in the front um, of the end zone, actually in Tennessee Titans Stadium, Nissan Stadium, have you been, otherwise known as the Houston Oilers Stadium. Have you been a fan of them ever since they were the Houston Oilers back then? I was a huge fan when I was a little kid, right? Warren Moon, I had paraphernalia out the wazoo of Warren Moon. I bet I still have a tiny jersey of Warren Moon back home. I definitely have a bunch of his sports cards from yes. back, when, back when everyone collected cards. I, I collected Houston Oilers. Um, football cards. <laughs> Warren Moon is a terrific guy. Of course, he serves. Uh, many people in the Northwest know that name well because he served the Seahawks well for a number of years. And of course, he serves as the Seahawks radio commentator out here now. So people get a chance to. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's great. Yes, 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 indeed. He serves alongside uh, longtime play by play man Steve Rabel. So he does the uh, Seahawks games on radio every single week. So if the Seahawks ever play the Titans, good chance you'll. You'll see him roaming around there. We play the Titans. I'm sorry. We play the Seahawks next season, as a matter of fact. That's right. Nashville. We do. That's right. It's going to be a bloodbath. We're really going to kill you guys. Good, good, good chance you'll see Warren Moon in the house then. I think I can't be a wait. Lot of fun. I'll be wearing his jersey. I, I, I tell you, the Titans are on the upswing. They've got a very talented quarterback, Marcus Mariota. They've got a they've got a team on the rise there. Look out for the Titans here in coming years. I'll say that. We just we just need Mariota to stay healthy for one entire season. But everything else besides our secondary is delightful. 
I think we have a really good chance of winning the division next year. Yeah, yeah. And then the other <clears throat> Houston Texans, well, yeah. We got we got taken down by the Jaguars were the ones who stood in our way. We we self destructed on the last game of the season our second to last game of the season. Because we would have gone if we'd have won yeah. just that one game, we would have made the playoffs. Two thousand and one or something like that. 2002, right the year after the Music City Miracle. No, I don't, I don't know if uh, you – I don't know how your loyalties are when your team is out of it, if you root for your other division folks or you, you might wish they go out of it. But if it's any consolation, I guess the New England Patriots kind of make quick work of Texans after that. I was absolutely rooting for the Texans. Why was I rooting for the Texans? Because um, the New England Patriots – are the new um, New York Yankees. And I always root against the dynasty. Same reason I was delightful. I was delightfully surprised when Clemson beat Alabama. If somebody wins too much, I'm an anti that team. <laughs> David Dunn joining us here at Christian Music Spotlight. That was, of course, our fun fast fact. Saving a chance for get to find out a little bit more about your favorite artists. And I think I just got a text. Uh, somebody... Uh, must have been watching that said Mariota is the bomb. Yes, I think he, he, if he can, if he can, if he can keep his leg from being unbroken, he is indeed the bomb. <laughs> Hopefully, if he's watching right now or catches it a little bit later, he'll he'll hear that. Yes, yeah, so I just thought I would share that a little shout out there. Uh, Mariota is the bomb. So there you are. I agree. <laughs> hey, there's a that's a that's a Pacific guy, right? Pacific, Pacific Northwest. Yes, yes, Oregon Duck. I think if the he's same one, person one of your watching people. right now, yes, he is a fan of the Oregon Ducks. So, yes. So he does Correct. have some Love Northwest it. ties up Go there. Ducks. And as a matter of fact, even further Northwest ties, before Mariota, of course, you guys had a guy, a Washington Husky, of course, by the name of Jake Locker down there as well. Very true, the Hurt Locker. Yeah, the Hurt Locker, yeah. Unfortunately, he didn't quite get up to his potential at the, uh, he was great. He was great as long as he could as stay healthy, and he just couldn't stay healthy. He, no, unfortunately it not. Turns out to be a reoccurring problem with quarterbacks, which you know how you solve <laughs> yeah. that problem. You just you just either can or cannot stay healthy. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully your guy Marietta can stay healthy, and you guys can make a run at the division next year. I think that's uh, yours for the taking, I think. Fingers crossed. David Dunn joining us talking about uh, all things football and new albums and things of that nature right here on Christian Music Spotlight. Uh, even a little Northwest ties of the football. See how it is with Warren Moon and Marcus Marietta and Jake Locker and something for everybody right here on our show. Uh, David Dunn, uh, favorite, um, that was of course our fun fast facts, a chance to find a little bit more favorite artists here in Christian Music. Uh, favorite uh, Bible verse, uh, if you had a chance to either, if What's your go-to? Either favorite person in the Bible or favorite uh, scripture that you know you need to. If you need to go to, that's the one. Um, um. So I have a lot of tattoos, and so I'm going to tell you my favorite verse that I have tattooed on my body because yeah, I feel obliged, and because it actually is my favorite verse. So, so I'm going to go with Deuteronomy 30:19. The reason that it's my favorite, I'm, I'll quote it to you in a second. But the reason it's my favorite is because, in my opinion. This verse encapsulates the entire Bible, not just the Old Testament, but the New Testament, the point of the Bible. Why was the Bible written? I think it was because of this verse. Ready? I, I set before you the choice of life and death, blessing and cursing. This is Moses talking to the children of Israel, by the way. I set before you the chi- choice of life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that you and your descendants might live. So I think that's the point of the Bible is – Choose life. You can either do things God's way. You can do things your way. You choose life or you choose death. Those are the only two options in this world. You can either choose life or you can choose death. Amen to that. David Dunn joining us here on Christian Music Spotlight. Uh, What's upcoming? Obviously, the new album comes out next month. Are we going to be going on tour, supporting that? What's what's next for you here in the upcoming months that uh, viewers and listeners can look forward to? Um, I... um I've got some like um, street week shows, probably five of them lined up. Uh, most of them are in, or most are all, all of them are going to be in Texas. So people in the Pacific Northwest are, are not going to be able to experience those. Um, 
And then I'm going to go out in March, which will be the, the next month after the record releases. I'm going to go out on a tour that's still TBT, right? We still don't really know exactly where, um, but I'll be out with, with a guy named Chris August. So we'll be in the tunes yes. together. Good guy. Good dude. You ever had a chance to tour with uh, Chris August yet? I know when we've had him on the show, it, he's just been absolutely fun and hilarious, and I think still one of my more fun interviews to date, I think. Uh, have you had a chance to perform with that guy yet? I haven't. Uh-uh. Bumped into it a bunch of times, but these will be the first shows that we've actually done together. By the way, this whole interview, this guy's been whining at me, if you've heard it in the background. Buppy. <laughs> this is my dude right here, and he's Super annoying when he's not getting attention. Oh, I bet you the last 20 minutes uh, have been probably just rough on him, I think. I think so. He's just sitting right here <laughs> in front of me, whining at me because I'm not touching him and, and, and talking to him. Right, buddy? I think my pets can be the same way, but thankfully, no pun intended, they're taking a cat nap right now. So they're not oh. they're there. <laughs> See what we did there? Yeah. Soaks. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am not only a uh, a pet dad. Yes, I am a dad of two. So yes, um, I have I, I run the mill when it comes to horrible puns and horrible dad jokes. Yes. I like it. I'm a fan. Thank you. See, I keep trying to convince certain people in my life that that it's a good thing, that it's a valuable thing, and some people just don't appreciate that type of humor. And it's very, no, I'm, it's very I'm unfortunate. 100% for it. Hey, I'm supporting you, man. I'll support you and your bad jokes, because I love them, too. What? Well, well, thank you. It, it means a lot. Thank you. <laughs> actually, I've actually started to, and you should participate in this, I've actually okay, started right. to, about once a week on Twitter, have a pun off. I'll, yes. I'll, I'll throw out a word, and I'll let people pun themselves to death. And it's my favorite, because I love the responses. Oh, I must join you. You must. I must, I must do it. I, I am so there. You're invited, man. All right. All right, I'm there. I will look out for it on the old Twitter feed. Uh, David Dunn here joining us here on Christian Music Spotlight. Uh, for those uh, who are attending one of your shows before we let you go of course uh, for those that are attending one of your shows for those who are listening to the brand new album uh, for those obviously who are a fan when they leave one of your shows um, what message of hope and encouragement do you want them left with at the end of the day beyond the music beyond the entertainment what's the thing you want them left with at the end of the day oh god that's such a loaded question um <laughs> What do I want people to take away? Here's what I try to accomplish at shows, right? Um, it's, it's, it's a room full of strangers from my perspective, right? It's a room full of strangers. Um, I get up on stage and I play to people that I don't know for the most part. And uh, because of the God-given gift of music, I get a moment, right? 45 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour and a half, however long the show is to connect with people on a much deeper humanity level than I otherwise would be able to do without music. And so what I want to have happen at a show is for a room full of strangers to become um, friends and confidants over however long the period of time is. Because what I try to do on stage is I'm, I'm, I'm seeing about the way that I interact with other people and with God. And what I want to have happen is for everybody else to go me too. We're humans in the same boat. And this is the thing that we do together. And so I want the connection. That's why I love playing live music, to be honest with you, is because it's my opportunity to see strangers turn into confidants. And we may never actually even exchange a word, right? We may not get to shake hands and hug after the show, but we, because of music, we might get to connect on an intimate level that would otherwise not be possible. And I, I think it's great because we all are one big happy family, you know, one big extended family, I guess you could say, being the uh, the body of Christ. And I think I saw uh, earlier today or yesterday the uh, Nali, I've seen the regular video before, but I also got a chance to see the acoustic 
rendition of I Want to Go Back. How fun was that to do and to film? It was awesome. Oh, it was so fun. I just grabbed a couple of my buddies and we ran to a studio and we did it real quick. It was so fun. That's one other question I suppose I could ask is when you perform with a full accompaniment and a full band versus acoustic, do you like particularly yourself as an artist one way or the other or is there different joys about each one? Um, I, I would much rather in a perfect world play with a full band, right? It would be a different sort of band. My stuff is very electronic. It's very like um, uh, the instrumentation is very progressive in general. And so in a perfect world, I would love to have a bunch of people up there, computers um, and me singing. That would, that would be a perfect world. The reason is, is because it allows for other people's ingenuity and creativity to be a part of the live experience. Because right now, in general, you're just getting me, right? When I, even when I make a record, it's just me and, and, and one other person who sit behind a computer and then I play everything. Um, and so in a live setting, there is other people's opinions about the way that a, a song should sound. And that, I think, is a beautiful thing. Um, so that, that's why I enjoy playing with, with other people is because you actually, you actually are not just hearing me, you're hearing other creative people um, being creative. And that's why, you know, accompaniment is, is, a, uh, is a beautiful thing in a live setting. Another reason why I think right now that your new song, I Want to Go Back, and your uh, forthcoming album, I think, is going to impact a lot of people, not only because it focuses people on the things and the people that matter most, but it also comes at a time when our nation is struggling with unity. It's, it's struggling mm -hmm. in that aspect, even, even, even in the body of Christ. Uh, what sort of advice maybe even writing this 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 new album or just because this music is coming at a time when i think the body of christ really needs the refreshing really needs encouragement really needs that come together message really of impacting people on the things and the people that matter most um i don't think it's any coincidence but uh what sort of encouragement would you give the body of christ right now as we navigate through these interesting times in, in our country that we go through yeah, um, I mean, that's a loaded question again. Um, and I, I'm not exactly sure what the answer is. You know, from, from a political perspective, um, uh, what I am mostly seeing, especially with the body of Christ, is um, a bunch of people who actually really care about the same thing and have different approaches for how they handle that same thing that they care about. Um, you know, and we have we have sort of segregated politics and religion, um, Christianity for us Christians, and um, I think that is a uh, a very foolish thing to do because the two go hand in hand. Without without moral guidelines and principles to to um, you know to direct your political stance, um, there is no political stance. You know, because then it's then it's just the the matter of the beholder. It's whoever can make up their own sense of morals and and, and the way that humans should behave. So um, I think I think the best way to unify, in my opinion, is for people to acknowledge each other's intentions, and then uh, and then uh, go from there. Right. Everything else everything else is negotiable as long as we start from a, this is what we want to accomplish. We want we want for things to be well with everyone we want everyone to prosper we want everyone to be taken care of we want everybody to take care of themselves all of those things in a bucket we all go this is what we want and now let's go from there Of course, David Dunn, kind enough to join us here on Christian Music Spotlight. Uh, first time in a couple of years he's joined the program. Definitely we'll have to get together and do this uh, more often. For those that want to uh, check out um, and follow you and get to know you on either websites or social media, where can they connect up with you to find out more about you, your music, and the pun battles and everything else going on? Um, uh, Facebook, 
just type in David Dunn, and it'll it'll pop up with me and a European soccer player. Don't click on his page. I mean, you can if you'd like, if you're a <laughs> soccer fan. Any um, relation? I probably not. I would nope. Imagine, right? But there's no. been some fun Twitter things that have occurred because of um, the David Dunn that played for the Blackburn Rovers, and I actually have a David Dunn jersey. Whoa! From the Blackburn Rovers. Yes, my brother-in-law bought me that because it's hilarious. And uh, if you want to go to Instagram, it's David T. Dunn. Twitter's the same, David T. Dunn. Um, platforms, am I forgetting one? Facebook. I don't think so. There's so many nowadays. Follow. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yep. Google Plus. I mean, there's, it's hard to keep up with. There's so many nowadays. Totally. Well, hey, David, thanks so much for joining us here on our broadcast. And many continued blessings and success to you. It's just fun seeing this new song, this new album resonate with so many people already as it is uh, out there uh, on, on the radio, getting tons of airplay so far. And just continued success to you and your family, uh, both personally and professionally. It's been fun uh, to see uh, this, this new uh, chapter and this new bit of success take shape for you. So many prayers and many blessings to you. And Thank you for everything you do, not only for the body of Christ, but this uh, realm of Christian music. Thank you for the role that you play in it. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Anytime, David. Thanks for carving out a little bit of your day to join us. And might I add again, you're one of the first to join us live via Google Hangouts. We've done studio shows with our regular hour-long show before, but as far as our music show, usually we do them either tape delay recorded or via Skype, but you're one of the first ones to go live with us on YouTube. So thanks for being part of this uh, maiden voyage here of the uh, Google Hangout portion of, uh, of the shows. Yeah, dude, my pleasure. David Dunn joining us, kind enough to take a few minutes of his day. His new album, of course, Yellow Balloons, featuring that new radio single, I Want to Go Back, comes out uh, next month, February 17th. Thank you to all of you for watching on our YouTube site. You can view the show uh, after we get done live at our YouTube site, youtube.com slash Christ Music Spotlight. You can also view us on television where this will appear as well at our usual time slots here in the Northwest, Sunday nights, Tuesday mornings, and Thursday afternoons on our flagship channel. Thank you so much for joining us. For David Dunn, joining me, I am Joseph Neal. We'll see you back here next time on the place where God made room for all and where we give you the stories and testimonies behind the songs of your favorite artists right here in Christian Music, here on Christian Music. But, like, thanks for watching. God bless, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.